Welcome to Healthy Living. Today we're talking about how dogs are being used to help people with some very serious medical condition. It's amazing and it's all in the new book, Dr. Dogs, How Our Best Friends Are Becoming Our Best Medicine. And joining me is Maria Goodavage, who wrote the book, and Danielle Brooks, who suffers from narcolepsy and her dog, Rolo, so sweet. Maria and Rolo are featured in the book. Maria, Danielle, so great to have you here. Thank you for having me. So Thank Maria, you. why did you write Dr. Dogs? Well, I've been writing about military dogs and secret service dogs for my last several books. And those are dogs who save the lives of their people by day and by night, by, often by use of their noses and the incredible bonds they have. And so I started learning about dogs who help people with all kinds of maladies and even detecting things like cancer in research settings. And I thought this is just such a next great step because I want to tell the world about these amazing new cutting edge jobs that these doctor dogs have that really follow the, the dog's natural tendencies. Now, Danielle, you battle uncontrollable narcolepsy and other sleep disorders. You actually fall asleep out of the blue and little wakes you up. So before Rolo, what was your life like? So I have narcolepsy and cataplexy, and I also was recently diagnosed with POTS, and so that also has to do with like dizzy, dizziness. So uh, prior to Rolo, I was in high when I, I was in high school, and I couldn't stay awake in class. I was a year-round swimmer and very competitive swimmer, and I couldn't make it through my practices. And every time I'd get in the car, I'd be asleep, and so my life just kind of revolved around sleeping, and I it was just a struggle to. Um, you know, to enjoy life and be, uh, be able to like partake in what I wanted to do. So after getting a concussion in my driveway, after like laughing with friends from my cataplexy, which is loss of muscle tone during change in emotion, whether that's laughing or fear, which can be anything from facial drooping to complete paralysis. And so after getting a concussion, I decided I needed to do more and I wanted to go off to college and be independent. Um, so I looked, my dad's co company like somehow got in touch with this organization, uh, Canine Partners for Life, which is located in Pennsylvania. And they had never done a service dog for narcolepsy, for anyone with narcolepsy, but they have uh, often do service dogs for people with fibromyalgia, uh, chronic fatigue, seizures, migraines, cardiac alert. So they were open and willing to train a dog for me to help me reduce fatigue by pulling along in his harness, uh, possibly alert. He doesn't alert to cataplexy because it's brought on by emotion, mm -hmm. but he alerts before my dizzy spells and sleep attacks and as well as um, any headaches um, so with that, I've been able to go to the University of Georgia and graduate. I have been able to not worry about the what if in life. Like mm -hmm. what if I fall asleep on the bus and miss my stop? Good. What if I, you know, fall in public and, you know, get hurt or mm -hmm. people think that I'm intoxicated or something when right. that's not the case at all. It's just due to my medical condition mm -hmm. that I would do that fall. But since I've had Rolo, I've only had two to three falls, and I've had them for over five years. But before that, I would have anywhere between like one to two complete falls a month. So you so. would literally fall asleep while you were standing so up. Cataplexy is not falling asleep. Mm -hmm. So cataplexy, it I'm fully conscious. I just can't see, and my body feels like um, it's like tingling, and any like touch or makes it worse. So that's not falling asleep, it's just like complete paralysis. Mm. So the falling asleep aspect is due to the uh, people with narcolepsy don't get deep restful sleep. So they we dream the whole night and like it's very exhausting on your body. So I kind of compare it to imagine staying awake for 48 hours and then wake up feeling that way, feeling Ugh. that exhaustion, How the awful. brain fog, fatigue, just struggling to get out of bed. So with Rolo, he's able to wake me up to my alarms. He's able to wake me up to my alarms from a medication that I have to take, like at 11 and at 3 in the morning. And so with that, like, I was able to move out and live on my own in college. And now I'm in graduate school at Georgia State University and pursuing a degree in speech therapy. So he's just completely 
given me so much independence. Mm -hmm. and, and so he sleeps with you and mm -hmm. wakes you up when you need to take your medicine. Yes. And what else does he do to help you? So he pulls me along to reduce fatigue. So I kind of compare that to imagine being on really sturdy rollerblades and just being pulled along mm -hmm. nicely. So I'm able to have more energy throughout the day and you know, be able to say yes to things and say yes to, oh, I want to go to that football game or I'm going to go on a walk at the park, to the park. Um, he also has gotten me out and about and doing things and in the service dog community as well. So he's also picks things up for me. Um, so you actually had to go through a training period of about three weeks, right? Yes. Where you and Rolo sort of bonded and mm -hmm. got your groove together. Yeah, so uh, for this organization, Canine Partners for Life, they matched based on personality and lifestyle. So I need a dog that would alert and a dog that was energetic yet kind of wanted would be relaxed at the same time. And so with that, like after you get matched, then you go up for three weeks of training, you know, learn how to, you know, take them on an airplane, what to say when someone says, no, you can't have that dog, even though they're allowed everywhere according to the ADA, except for like uh, certain places in the hospital. So yes, we went through three weeks of training and went to, had field trips to the zoo and field trips to Philadelphia. That was like our big last one. Um, so they really prepare you well to go out in the world and be successful as a team and as a partnership. How does he fit into grad school? So he is, we have long classes, so he sleeps through them all <laughs> and make sure, make sure I take my nap during the day. And he's just, he's, I mean, I came from undergrad and went straight into grad school, so he's used to like study, the study life, but our new apartment has a dog park in the back, so he's really enjoyed that. Well, he's just so sweet, Thank and you. I and you're so confident and relaxed. Thank I'm you. sure he he's made me. all the difference yeah. in the world. It must yes. have been terrifying having narcolepsy. Well, it's not terrifying. It's more along the lines of, so I got this diagnosis as a freshman in high school, and it's that now, for me, it was like, this disorder is, doesn't define me, but it's just a part of my life. Mm -hmm. And I've had to learn to find a new normal. And, you know, I would, before Rolo, I'd push my limits and then I would know that was, um, you know, I, I, needed, I needed something more to be able to want to go do all the things I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. one of the, my favorite memories and, and something I'm really proud of is that I was able to study abroad in England and Scotland with Rolo. And we went on like 11 mile hikes and Wonderful. went all throughout the national parks and everything. And I just wouldn't have been able to do it without him and his not only alerting capability, but also just the f reducing fatigue throughout that whole trip and making, I was really able to enjoy it instead of having to worry about, you know, when's my next nap? Or if I eat now, then I'm going to need a nap in 30 minutes. But he he's keeps me in line. Mm -hmm. So I'm able mm -hmm. to just be present and really enjoy every oh, wonderful, situation. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, we're so happy for you. Thank and you. Rolo, I'm happy to say, <laughs> is not alone. When we come back, we'll show you other ways dogs are helping people with different medical conditions. So stay tuned. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels Look, in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy, when we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, 
along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD, Protect Your Brain, and get it today. We're back with Danielle Brooks, who lives with narcolepsy, and her sweet dog, Rolo, and Maria Goodavage, author of the new book, Dr. Dogs, How Our Best Friends Are Becoming Our Best Medicine. And Maria, you feature so many people with different medical conditions in your book who are helped by these dogs, such as Clay Ronk and his diabetic alert dog, Whitley. Clay has type 1 diabetes, right? Yes, and they learned about it during a terrible emergency when he was seven years old. He had to be rushed, airlifted to San Francisco, uh, San Francisco Hospital, where they saved his life. And he tried for years to get one of these dogs who can alert to high or low blood sugars. And when he was 14, he was paired with Whitley, who is truly a lifesaver. She is so good about staring at him. And she has a something called a brinzel, um, which she can pick up. It's hanging off of her, like a tube hanging off of her collar. And when she smells a low blood sugar, she'll sit and stare and just make sure he knows and he'll test. And she's inevitably 15 or 20 minutes before his devices, before his monitors. Yeah, wow. it's, it's incredible. And she actually can awake from a deep sleep to tell him that he's going into, into a, a low. So it's, yeah, she's a lifesaver. And she also goes to college with him. Oh, wonderful, yeah, yeah. wonderful. Well, you also talk in your book about doctor dogs who help people who are prone to having seizures. Yes, yeah, that's another one of the wonderful things they do. Um, they give people back their lives because people do not know when they're going to have a seizure. Um, and so the dogs are now being trained to sniff before they can tell the scent of someone before they have a seizure. There are probably other signals that they're using, mm -hmm. but now it's uh, they're training them on scent for the most part, mm -hmm. and they can also tell them, don't, you know, here, you're going, to, you're going to have a seizure, and so they won't shower, or they'll sit down if they're outside, they'll take their medication, mm -hmm. and then, uh, like Danielle's dog, they're with them while they're seizing, they're trained what mm -hmm. to do, some call 911 or the, the nearest relative, and they're just best friends in these situations. We have a picture of Leslie Fong yeah. and her seizure alert dog named Bud, yes. and these yeah, two is, are good buddies. This is just after one of her um, tonic-clonic seizures, those are mm -hmm. grand mal seizures, and he's there, he cuddles up with her, he, he actually goes underneath her, he sidles up to her so she doesn't get damaged when she's going through one of these seizures, and, and then he's there with her for the stage after the seizures. He's, such, he's, he's our best friend. I just saw her the other day, and they're doing great. Oh, yeah. that's what's, wonderful. What's really cool about the uh, seizure alert dogs is that's like an innate ability. So once they figure out that dog can alert, then they go in and can keep on working and training that Yeah, skill. yeah. Some, some dogs can get it, and some dogs don't. And, yeah. and a lot of the times, the dogs self-train, and mm -hmm. the people realize, wait, my dog is getting anxious, and then 10 minutes later, I have a seizure. Oh, so yeah. those people can can learn to read their own dog, and it's really a life-saving machine. Fascinating. And we know that some dogs can even detect cancer, which yes. is mind-boggling. A lot of people can't believe that, that dogs are able to do that. But we, you talk about a Japanese community uh, that has a very high rate of stomach cancer, and they're using doctor dogs there. Yeah, and that's actually one of the first, that's the first screening study. Most of the work in cancer is being done in uh, research centers, now get it out of the way, these are not le beagles locked away in cages. Right. These are happy dogs. They're usually pets who come in for the mm -hmm. day and they're really trained mm -hmm. and they can detect cancer around a cancer wheel. And in Japan, um, they have a very high stomach rate of cancer in this gorgeous community. And you would never think, oh, such a high stomach rate, but they're not looking at why the stomach rate is so high, but mm -hmm. um, at how they can do detection rapidly, non-invasively. Mm -hmm. And this uh, Dr. Miyashita is a doctor in Tokyo who, who specializes in stomach cancer. And 
he was able to work with the community and using urine samples do a detection on about a thousand people in the community. Mm, um, and this is the first one in a, a real town. Everything else has been laboratory. And it's hard because you can't reward the dog if you don't know if it's cancer or not. So there was a, there were some stumblings uh, there, but they did a really good job and they're continuing with this. So you talk about psychiatric service dogs, mental health, and uh, we have a picture here of Angus who's helping Kit Heiser, what's that situation yeah. like? She's in a mall. I she was has with anxiety, them. I took right? this picture. Yes, yes. She has very significant anxiety. And um, they were in a mall, and she started getting kind of anxious and nervous. And she just asked him, exit. And he knew where the exit was, and he was able to get her to the exit. This can happen in concerts. And, and she, he also leans into her and, and does all the things that dogs can do to lessen uh, the anxiety that people have, but in a very direct way that's really helpful to her. They have a lot of skills around these, and this is very common with uh, dogs trained for PTSD as well. Mm -hmm. very, so very people with these types of disorders can go out in public because a lot of times people with PTSD and severe anxiety, they don't like to be out in wide open spaces where there are a lot of people. Right, the dogs give them back their world. And speaking of psychiatric disorders, this is a very serious mental illness. We have a picture here of Molly who was actually cutting herself and hallucinating because of her mental illness and her dog Hank helps her. Can you elaborate on that? Yes, her dog was her pet dog and um, one time she was hospitalized, she had Take, she had tried to take her life mm. because she has both auditory and visual hallucinations and they're always telling her really bad things mm -hmm. And so, uh, for years. And so um, when she was hospitalized, the parents thought, we need to get her a dog. Hey, let's see if we can ha get Hank trained. And so Hank is able to prevent her from cutting. She, when, when she starts doing that motion, he'll do this and she'll say, oh gosh, no. But the biggest thing for her is that just by virtue of being a dog, he's a friendly lab like this guy. Mm -hmm. He will greet anybody, anyone really in a friendly manner. So she realizes if he doesn't see what, if he's not greeting someone, then these horrible people are not real. So he mm, helps her wonderful. just separate reality from these terrible hallucinations just because he's a dog. Mm, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, we have a lot more to talk about. Coming up, we'll tell you what goes into training these doctor dogs. Stay with us. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis. But why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state, how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, yes. Lord, into public schools. Watch The Prayer Link, Tuesday nights at 6.30. If you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series.
Welcome back. So when it comes to training, it's all about the smell. Maria, tell us how these dogs are trained. I think we have a little bit of video from some training at Georgia Tech, and um, this dog has a device on it mm -hmm. that's, that alerts, that says to people, my owner needs help. Yeah, that's a beta device. It's, it's, in, uh, it's in the works right now, and that will be something that dogs can wear. Eventually, those things will be able to say, um, you're going to go into a diabetic low or high or you're going to have a seizure or you know There are many many potential uses for those vests wearable technology is definitely coming up So the dog actually um, alerts a recording that's that, that where you can hear exactly. an audible voice Exactly, so it says if the dog is talking to you and saying <laughs> my you know or my the one that it says now is Excuse me. My owner needs your help. Please follow me and they found they have to say that twice because the first time people just go What is this a, a talking, talking dog? dog? <laughs> <laughs> so um, but that's that's, that's not really the train, that's the thing of the future. There are many future uses of what they're doing now. For instance, mm -hmm. for the cancer research, which is going on all over the world, it's really exciting. They're finding that dogs can find cancer at early, early stages for wow. cancers that are really hard to normally detect at an early stage. So that's really exciting, but mm. they're not going to have dogs in your doctor's laboratory because dogs are only human right. and they have their <laughs> off days and, it's, and there's better, there are better things ahead. Dogs are this beautiful link to the future, which mm -hmm. a lot of scientists and researchers envision um, having these e-noses, electronic noses, that will be able to really easily detect cancer based on what the dogs are smelling. There are physicists and chemists working to find out the scent of cancer, and oh. eventually, not in the distant future, maybe you'll be able to go breathe into a tube and find if you have any type of cancer, mm. and it's a very hopeful future based on our best friend's work right now. And you know, so many cancers, there are there are no early detection devices, and yeah. so you often don't know that you have it until it's in its, it's uh, advanced We have state. one of those in our family, so mm. I'm really rooting for them. The dogs yeah. at um, Penn, uh, University of Pennsylvania are working on oh. detecting ovarian cancer, and they're doing it at stage one, so it's really hopeful. One Wonderful. And you go into the detail about that in your book, Dr. Dogs. It's, it's a wonderful read. And um, talk about, <laughs> we have video of this little dog in a tutu who is being trained to uh, for a Parkinson's yes, disease. Yes. <laughs> this is Sugar. Sugar is Suga. a diva. And she's really good at detecting Parkinson's disease on an island in Washington State. See, she's divaing the door open. She gets, uh, she goes around and she will find the t-shirt that has Parkinson's there. Is that it? Yep, that's it. Good girl. So she's she's one of many dogs in Washington State who are detecting Parkinson's. The idea, again, is to be able to find the earliest detection so that people can start getting treated mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. And the dogs are helping lead the way to that as well. Early detection is so important. Is. And another thing that we've been hearing about so much in the news lately are superbugs, these drug-resistant bacteria that often are in hospitals. And I believe we have video of a dog sniffing out a superbug in a hospital <laughs> yes, of all this places. this is up in Vancouver. This is Angus, and he's sniffing out C. diff, Clostridium difficile, which is very easily spread among uh, a lot of populations who are in hospitals. And so he stops it in his tracks, and he, he's going to, if you get to the point, he will alert here, mm -hmm. and they will come in with all kinds of high-tech stuff and eliminate what he has smelled. And it's it's helped enormously to the point where they're getting many more dogs doing this in these Vancouver hospitals. Here he is. He's um, That's his little alert he's going to in a minute sit and tell her yeah this is really it and so they, they clean up and part of this is the hospital staff is is even more wise and more clean because mm -hmm. he's there inspecting everything as well right you can't see those awful kid killer bacteria no. but the dogs like these they can smell yeah, them it's really exciting work this is fascinating and we're going to take another quick break when we come back we're going to tell you how you can get a dog like rollo so stay with us Too often, we carry baggage from our past. You know what it's like. It affects everything and everyone in our lives. It's always there, weighing us down and keeping us from achieving true happiness. But do you know God never meant for us to be trapped in the past? You can be free of your baggage. Learn how God's forgiveness leads to changed lives and new beginnings. Call the 700 Club. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. 
We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Takun Olam. This is our nature as a country. To make the world a better place. Literally, we felt the earth shaking. The Christian Broadcasting Network presents To Life. How Israeli volunteers are changing the world. This film needs to be seen by everyone. I was in tears. Now you can own the inspiring documentary to life on DVD. There is blood on our hands if we know and we walk away. I'm so grateful that this film was made. To life can be yours for a gift of $10 or more. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com. We know that every minute counts to save life. It'll uh, bless Israel, but it'll also bless all the friends of Israel. Discover the untold story of how Israeli volunteers are making the world a better place. Call 1-800-700-7000 or log on to CBN.com to get your copy today. And we're back, and the moment you've all been waiting for, Danielle, so many people would love a dog like Rolo and need a dog like Rolo. How did you get him? So I did a lot of research and searched a lot online to find like organizations that were really well known as well as I reached out to people who gotten dogs from those organizations to see if they the dogs were well trained, how the training went when you received the dog, how if you got support afterwards after receiving your dog. So I did a lot of research on the internet and then also just reaching out to people who have received dogs from this organization. And you can often contact organizations and be like, is there anyone who you could get me in contact with to share their experience with? But the biggest thing is you just want to be careful with who you're going to and make sure you just make sure you do your research so that you don't get a dog that's not trained because these dogs take a long time to train and you want to be able to um, take them in public and for them to be good ambassadors for service dogs and not be barking or be crazy or, you know, because not all dogs are meant to be service dogs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there are, um, it's a weed out system for when they are training them. He but. definitely makes it look easy. Maria, <laughs> you write about so many different doctor dogs, so many different types. What's your advice to people who would like one? Danielle's advice was spot on. And really, really do your homework because there are a lot of really good organizations out there that produce very good dogs. There are some well-meaning ones that don't produce such good dogs. And then there are actually organizations that rip people off. Aww. And you have to be so careful, as Danielle said, contact people who have had dogs through them, more than one person, see what their follow-up is. Mm -hmm. Just be extremely careful. There are many ways to train many different types of dogs. Mm -hmm. So just yeah, the homework is so essential. Uh, you don't want to end up with a 20,000 dog who uh, barks everywhere and it doesn't, like for diabetes, mm -hmm. I've heard about these dogs mm -hmm. who just, they don't do their dog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some organizations don't require you to pay or require you to do a small fundraiser. So a lot of times people ask how much it costs. So that's one thing that certain organizations will ask you to provide a little bit, but that at the same time, like some, you're not always turned away if you're not financially able to raise that a little yeah. bit of money, but definitely like she said, do your homework. Yeah, and some, some are free, but you yes. have to go through very extensive programs and wait sometimes years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, All right. Yeah. Well, once They're again, worth... the book is fantastic. Dr. Dogs, How Our Best Friends Are Becoming Our Best Medicine. Well said. And my thanks to both of you, Maria Goodavage, the author of the book, and Danielle Brooks, as well as Rolo. <laughs> thank and you thank you me. to you for joining in today to Healthy Living, and we'll see you again next time.